G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, what we're gonna go through today is I'm gonna show you how to fix those trigger points or knots in your upper back. Now, most people who sit at a desk, who study, um, who sit in general, whether you drive a car, a truck, uh, or you, you work from home, whatever it might be, uh, it's really common to feel like you get these trigger points, these balls and muscle spasm in the upper back around that shoulder blade or the inside of that shoulder blade. Now there's a, there's a few ways that we traditionally go about that and what I want to show you today is a little bit different to what we would normally go through because I feel like this works more than the traditional method of trying to free up those trigger points. Uh, the reason being is that the, the treatments that we normally do for trigger points, we tend to do a lot of massage, we tend to do a lot of strength work. Um, and if you're lucky you might find someone who can find those sort of spasmed muscles, dig their fingers into it, put some constant pressure on that and, and help that release, that trigger point therapy that I'm sure you've heard about. Um, but what I want to do today is I want to add in something on top of that to maximize your ability to fix the problem by linking in, I guess, the, by talking about what the cause of the problem is so that the things that you're doing are more effective because you know why you're doing them and you can do them in the right areas in the right way. So, so we're going to go through probably three exercises today. Uh, one mobility exercise and sort of two strength exercises. Um, they're, they're all pretty simple. Um, but the idea with trigger points is... They don't just happen. Uh, you don't wake up one day and your muscles decide to spasm and to turn into a knot. It can certainly feel like that if you felt good the day before, but then you wake up and you have that sensation. But in essence, what a muscle spasm is, and this is what we often forget about muscle spasm, is that it's, it's asked to be there by your nervous system. It's a protective mechanism. It's a thing your body does to support an area that's becoming overloaded and, and irritated or it's under threat. So we often see the muscle spasm because when you run your fingers over it, it feels like a knot or a lump or a ball of muscle, which is easy to find. But we don't realize that underneath that is a joint that is struggling. It's annoyed, it's irritated, it's overloaded. So, so any exercises, any treatment to fix trigger points or knots has to include getting to the reason why those knots are there in the first place. So the joint stiffness underneath but also the positions and the postures that cause that overload. So, so what we wanna go through first is with a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball as this is, we wanna go looking sort of, most people have them from there, the base of their shoulder blades up. So in that sort of, that rectangle in between your shoulder blades and the base and the top, we wanna to go hunting for joints that are stiff more so than muscles that are spasmed and tight. Now you might find that sort of, you might have to sort of get around and underneath a muscle to hit the joint, but the exercise is quite simple. And how that looks basically is we want to get the ball, we want to place it right in the middle of the spine. Uh, and then if, say, this side's the side that has the spasm, we want the ball to roll off ever so slightly to that side. And then we want to either lean up against a wall so that you can get some pressure on it, or for the purposes of this, we want to get you to lie down on that spot. So I don't know if the video will pick this up too well, but essentially I've got the ball just off to the side of my spine. And what I'm going to do here is, using my arm, I'm going to come all the way up and all the way over as far as I can, uh, and, and I'm going to oscillate. Now, what we should see with this is, most people should be able to keep their arm straight and get their hand or their arm to touch, touch the floor. If you can't do that, then there's some genuine stiffness in those joints. So we want to be right next to the spine. If you come out a fraction uh, wider to the side that you're on, you'll start to hit the ribs. And now these ribs are often the, the joints that get the most irritated, that have the most spasm around them, and they can be the most tender. So, so be gentle, but again, once you find a spot that feels a bit stiff and tight and it may be tender, same thing, just come over the top with your movement. We're gonna use your arm mobility, use your, your shoulder to shear free that stiffness and move that stiffness around. And then in no time, you should feel like it frees up. And then the idea, then is we want to move up a little bit higher, so I've moved the ball up a fraction, back into the middle of the, uh, into the middle, closer to the spine, so not on the spine, but just off to the side. We're going to repeat the same idea. So for me, this joint feels a bit stiffer, so you'll notice that my arm doesn't get as far to the ground. But after a short amount of time oscillating in and out of this range, what you should see is that it starts to move further and further and further, and then eventually you should feel like it starts to get to the ground. And then if I come further out to the side, closest to the camera, hit the rib joint, that one feels a little bit tender, and I want to repeat that process. So for me, here feels about my limit, 
But then as I gently work in and out of that range, you should feel and see that my arm starts to go further again. So that rib joint as it attaches to my spine is beginning to move because I'm asking it to by jamming the ball in and also moving the tissue around it. And then what that does is, you should feel like in an instant that that area feels looser. Now, <laughs> it can help to give that area a massage or to do the trigger point therapy over the top. But if you're not freeing up those joints segmentally as you go up the spine and then the rib joints, which are slightly further to the side, so in this case on this side, then we're missing that stiffness, which is asking the muscles to sort of tighten up and spasm over the top. So we can massage and push on those muscles as much as we want to, but they're going to keep tightening up again day after day, week after week, until we get the stiffness or the signal underneath that that's telling it to be tight to go away. So something as simple as a, as a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball on the area with some movement can be a really powerful way to work up and down that upper back, free that up and restore normal motion. So, so from a mobility perspective, um, that's a really good way to get to the, I guess, the underlying cause of muscle spasm or trigger points. But we always need to make sure that we're following that up with the ability to put your body back in a good position. So if you feel like there's a particular spot at the back which is quite tight and tender, there has to be a reason why that particular part of your body has become tight and tender. And what we often see is it generally links into the, the most boring of topics of conversation, which is your, your shoulder posture. So if you're doing something where you're in a position where you're slouching or your, your shoulders are rounding and you're doing something quite a lot, whether that's just sitting down reading, uh, driving or doing something, you can be standing doing the same thing, reaching forwards. That constant load through the back, I don't know if you can see this, but as my shoulders sort of roll around, it just creates this constant pull in that upper back. Thanks to gravity always acting downwards, the weight of my arm always pulling downwards. When we rest on those tissues, we ask them over time to become stiff and tight. And if they become stiff and tight and irritated, then we get that muscle spasm over the top, which again, it doesn't have to be painful without touching it. It can be painful, it may not be, but it's there nonetheless. So if, we're do if you're doing your best to massage and trigger point the, the muscles and then de-stiffening the joints underneath, you have to follow that up with better shoulder postures where your shoulder blades are coming back and up a little bit. Um, if we're not creating those positions to take the load off the back, it's going to keep stiffening up. You're going to keep having those trigger points and it's, it's almost impossible to get rid of them um, without getting into a better position. So just quickly on that better position, the common misconception with posture and better posture is that you have to put your shoulders back and down. Um, it's not the case. In reality, for most people, it's definitely back because when we're in this position, they tend to, tend to roll forwards. But as you'll notice with gravity, gravity asks us to drop our shoulders and roll forwards. So to counteract that, we're actually going back and up a little bit. So it's a common misconception that a good posture is actually back and up a fraction. Um, the reason why we, we sort of, we lead people to believe that down is better is because these muscles get tight so easily. We, we give it, it gives us this impression that we're up here all the time but we're not. If you, ever look, if you look at anyone who slouches, it's always down and forwards. We're in this sort of hanging position. So we need to get out of that. We need to come back and then take the load of those shoulders. Obviously you don't want to be up tall. You want to be in a comfortable position. Um, so if you're not doing that, th they won't get better. Now, so all that encompasses, I guess, the first exercise of mobilizing the area. Uh, what we can try and do on the other side of that is we can go through two basic exercises to strengthen the area. Now, you can't out-strengthen stiffness. So if those joints and those rib joints are stiff from bad postures and those muscles are tight, it doesn't matter how strong you get, it doesn't stop them from being stiff. You, can, you have to mobilize them to de-stiffen them, or you have to create a better environment where you're not constantly overloading those tissues for them to naturally free up over time. Um, what strength does is strength gives you a bigger buffer against dysfunction. So if your muscles are stronger, they tolerate more load, but there's still a, a threshold for where that tolerance ends and dysfunction starts. So yes, strength gives you a, a higher tolerance to bad postures, but if those bad postures are there, you haven't solved anything, you've just made it, I guess you've, you've pushed it to a, a tomorrow's problem where eventually it may get to a point where you become dysfunctional 
there's no guarantee that you've you've completely knocked it on the head and solved that problem. So, so the the reason why two strength exercises are important is because we want to use those strength exercises to create better posture. So, as you remember, we spoke about good posture is actually shoulders back and up a little bit. We want to make sure that the muscles that hold you in that position are stronger. So. You can use any stretchy band. So this is a power band. Um, and like the lacrosse ball, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to pick one up. But the any band will do. If you have any elastic, like a TheraBand or a TheraTubing, those exercise bands with the handles on them, doesn't matter what it is, an old inner tube bike tire, these are great for mobility work in general, but you can use it for strength work. So the, the way that you do this can be uh, different. It doesn't really matter how you do this, but it's the it's the movement that we want to we want to create. So uh, I don't have anything to tie it to, so I'm going to tie it around my feet here. But we want to create this rowing shape. So we want to be up nice and tall. You want to, you want to pull the band back towards you, and you want to squeeze those shoulder blades together. And now what we don't want here when we're doing this is we don't want those elbows to come out. We want your elbows in by your side, creating a really stable shoulder joint. And we don't want that chest, when you're doing this, we wanna make sure that your rib cage and chest is one solid block, and that your arms and shoulder blades are, are wrapping around those, those tissues. What we don't want is for you to stick your chest out as you're doing this. It's gonna load a lot of the lower back, the mid back. It's gonna uh, take a lot of the, uh, the function away from your shoulder blade. It can sort of inhibit how well they function. Um, we wanna do some rowing based exercises to make it easier for your shoulders to, to go back and stay back and, and feel comfortable there for a while. Now, the second part of the strength exercise is we wanna do some, some shrugs. Now, again, I don't have some weights handy, but what you can do if you're standing, but the video wouldn't pick this up, is you wanna have <coughs> some uh, the band, so imagine I'm standing on the band here. And again, you want to be in a good position. So shoulders comfortably back. We don't want to do this. We don't want your shoulders to come up in front of your ears. We want your shoulders comfortably back. And all we're doing is shrugging. So we're just trying to take those shoulders up behind your ears. And again, what we don't want you to do, similar to the, the rowing exercise, is when you're doing this and we're bringing those shoulders up, we don't want you to try and cheat and poke your chin out. Again, it's not great. It's not great for your neck. It doesn't you know, preach control. It's a, it's a default. It's a, a bad habit to get into. So we want a, a good spinal shape, and we just want your shoulder blades and your shoulders to go up and down in the direction almost behind you, the line of your ear. So again, what that does, similar to the rowing exercise, is we're trying to strengthen your ability to go back and strengthen your ability to go up. So those muscles in the back of your shoulders, the back of your upper back. When you're in these postures, they are gonna give you a better buffer, but it's also gonna help you be in a better posture for longer. So, so I guess in short, what we wanna to do to get rid of your trigger points, we wanna fix those knots forever, you have to get into good positions. If you're not, you're always gonna be telling that part of your body that it needs to be dysfunctional. So you can do all the strength work in the world, you can do all the mobility work in the world, you can do all the, the fancy treatments in the world, whether it's acupuncture or dry needling or trigger point therapy or massage or you know, jamming a ball in there or doing your strength work. <clears throat> but if you're not putting that in a better position, you know, retraining your body to absorb a better shape, then it's almost impossible to fix it. And it's just gonna be an ongoing problem for you forever. But we can speed that up by getting into the joints. Um, the joints are generally the things that tell the muscles to spasm. So if you were to rank what you need to do, obviously better posture is number one. Uh, freeing up the joints is probably a close second, so the rib joints and the spinal joints in that level. Um, and then massage and, and strength work are still important, but they're not as important. You can fix these things without doing those, um, using those techniques. So, so hopefully that's uh, some good insight into trigger points or knots. Uh, just know that you have full control over them. You don't have to have them, but just be aware that there's some hidden stuff underneath in terms of stiffness and, and postural problems. Uh, that need to go for those to go as well. So, uh, so as always, um, if you like what we're putting out, uh, please feel free to like the video. It just helps more people see it. Uh, and if you want to see more of our content, you know, please subscribe below. Um, you know, it, it just helps so you don't miss a video. We're trying to put them out daily or as close to daily as we can. Um, and obviously, I'd appreciate if you share this around to anyone that's always complaining of trigger points or 
uh, someone who's interested to hear about this sort of stuff. So, um, so until next time, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye.